In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this simple purse or wallet. It's a good size. It could be used as an evening bag, like a clutch bag, if you wanted to. And on the inside, you've actually got three pockets. And they're quite a decent size, whatever it is that you're carrying in there. And it's a little bit different. It's quite fun to make as well, but it is actually quite simple. Now, I've left a list of all of your materials and your cutting requirements in the description box underneath the video. You may have to click on see more to see all of those, but it takes very little fabric and very little time. So let's get started. Now, I'm using Decaville Lite as my interfacing. Your bag will need something to make it a little bit more stable, so a firm interfacing will be fine. A fusible fleece would be fine. Um, Decaville Lite, I find it gives a nice crisp finish to your work, but it's not thick. It's, it's not much thicker than your actual fabric. It's just quite stiff and it's single sided fusible. So you iron it onto one side. So I'm cutting the Decaville to the size that I want my, my bag to be. And this measures nine inches across and 14 inches down. All of your um, materials listing and your cutting instructions are going to be in the description box. So if you go underneath the video and you may need to click on see more, then all of your uh, cutting instructions will be there. So I'm in inches, but it will be in centimetres there as well. OK, so 9 by 14 for this one. And I've cut two pieces of fabric slightly larger. I will need to cut those down a little bit as well. But I'm going to round off the corners of my Decaville at the top. So this is where the flap's going to be. So it doesn't matter what size this is. I'm just using a, a ribbon reel because it came to hand. And then let's just snip around here. Same on this side. Then I'm going to iron it to one side of my fabric and this is the side that's going to be the flap. So again, my fabric I've cut slightly larger. Let's pop that in the center. Now with the Decaville, you will need to iron from the fabric side down. And of course you can't, you can't see where it is. So I'm just going to put a little bit of basting spray, that's 505 spray, onto the one side place that down and then turn it over and iron it and you can use a hot iron with steam for this one do be careful though because the steam won't penetrate through the decaville so it could it could be quite steamy as you're ironing this so a nice hot iron and just keep going over that until it's until it sticks Then I'm going to trim my outer fabric to about half an inch, maybe just under. That's going to be my seam allowance. So it doesn't have to, have to be exactly half an inch or exactly a quarter of an inch. I normally go by the side of my presser foot, to be honest, so slightly over a quarter of an inch. I will be fine and just snip this evenly all the way around. You may find it easier to use your rotary cutter ruler and might. I would normally do that. But um, scissors may be a little quicker this time and getting my mat out. That'll do. And then with my lining piece, I'm going to need to cut a piece to exactly the same size. So I'll use this as a template and then just cut this down to size. So my front pocket, I've already fused the Decaville onto my fabric. So this one, uh, the Decaville itself is measuring nine inches across again, and this time by 10 inches deep. So that's going to be the pocket on the front. So I can kind of keep checking the way that this is going to look. So that's the outer with the flap. That's going to be the pocket. And this is going to be, in effect, the pocket lining. So just like before, Decaville or interfacing, whatever you're using, fused to one side of the fabric. And then another piece of fabric cut to the same size. So when my bag's put together, it's, uh, it's kind of going to look a little bit like that. 
So we're going to fit the magnetic snap first of all. And you may have seen this several times before, but we're going to see it all over again. And I'm going to measure two inches from the top. Oh, it's better to work as well with a non-directional fabric if you can for something like this. So two inches from the top and then I'm going to measure halfway across. And I'm just going to put a little mark in erasable ink. So that's now nine and a half inches. So I'll need to mark four and three quarters, which is here. Take the back of your snap, place the center of it over the mark that you've just made. And we're going to draw a little line each side. And then that's difficult to pick up. Uh, we can take a quick and pick or a very sharp pair of scissors and just make a small incision through those lines. Don't make it too big. And then we'll have the fatter side of the clasp fitted to this section. So push those through and squish the back open and that's fitted. And then we'll need to fit the second part of the clasp to the, to, to the inside, to the lining side of the outer fabric, so the bit without the decaville on it. So this time I'm going to fold in half and crease it just to mark the centre point. And this part is going to be about an inch from the top. So again, take the, there you are, um, the back of your snap, just like you did before. Don't put it too close to the edge because you're going to have a seam allowance there, so you don't want to interfere with that. Um, you could put a little scrap of fabric on the back of here if your fabric is a little bit flimsy because we don't want it to be under any stress when we're opening and closing it. So that goes through there and that goes on there. And it's easier to squish the prongs open than it is towards each other for some reason. So that's what we're doing. Right, now we're going to sew together, right sides together, the pocket section first of all. And I'm going to sew from the Decaville side so I can see where I'm actually sewing. So line up these two pieces together. You may find it easier to clip than to pin because this is quite thick to pin through. So if you need to, then just pop a couple of clips in there to hold it in place. And I'm going to sew all the way around the edge of the Decaville, but I'm going to leave a turning gap of one in one side of about three inches or so. So let's start with the turning gap. Just there, and we'll just sew all the way around. Then I'm just going to snip across the corners to cut down on the bulk and help the points to sit a little bit more pointy. And then where did I leave the gap? There you are. We'll turn the whole thing the right side out. I'm just going to take my turning tool and push out those corners, make them nice and square. Sometimes your, um, if you're using Decaville particularly, it may lift a little bit, but don't worry about that. It'll easily be ironed back into place again in just a second. So you can see this has just rolled out a little bit where I've been turning it through but I can just push that back into the corners again. That's fine. And then let's give this a good old press. So where my turning gap is, 
I'm just going to fold in the edges and leave that because that'll be top stitch closed shortly. That's looking nice. And then I'm just going to top stitch across the top and across the bottom. Got a few loose threads that I need to cut away. And there. Then let's take our second pieces. So this is the larger piece with the flap. And again with the right sides together. I'm going to do the same and sew all the way around. I think this time I'm just going to pin within the seam allowance just to hold that in place. You can pin, you can clip, it doesn't matter. And I'm sewing just up against the edge of the Decaville. It doesn't matter if you do sew through it. You know, don't go and picking all of your stitches because you've caught some of the interfacing. But if you can sew just right on the edge, then that would be ideal. And again, I'm going to leave a turning gap just in one side. Just like before, I'm going to chop off the corners around the curved edges here. I'm going to cut those close to the seam, so maybe two millimeters or an eighth of an inch away from the seam. Let's just make the seam sit flatter when you turn it the right side out. And then, where did I leave that gap again? There we go. We'll turn this through to the right side out. The thing with the, a small turning gap, benefits and disadvantages. A small turning gap means there's not um, so much of a hole to sew over. And uh, the downside is um, it takes a long time to pull it through. So again, just like before, I'm going to use my uh, turning tool. And the round end of your tool, if you have one of these, is perfect for pushing in here and pushing out those round curves. There we go. And then we're going to press this. Again, any of the Decaville that's come a little bit loose, just push it back into place again. And when we reheat it, now that should stick. So there's my turning gap. So just like before, I'm going to fold the edges inwards so they meet. Give that a good old press. It'll probably need, well it will need it, particularly with the Decaville, because it does tend to crumple a little bit like um, a little bit like cardboard or paper when you use it. But it does really give a nice finish. Just fold the edges that opening in a little bit more. It's escaped somewhat. That's it. Right, now this time I'm just going to top stitch across the bottom. Thank you. 
Right, and we can start to piece this together. So let's take the pocket piece and we're going to place this over the top of the front piece. Now I'm going to do this back to front because my um, heavily patterned fabric is going to be quite difficult to mark. Um, so I'm going to mark it from the lining side. So I have the snap, oops, the snap facing down and the snap facing down. And I'm going to put those two pieces together. So normally, if I've got a paler fabric, I would draw from this side, or if I had some chalk handy, then that would help, but I don't. So I'm going to do it from this side. Okay. And I'm going to hold that together with a couple of clips. Then I'm going to draw a box, which measures three inches from the bottom. and six inches wide this doesn't have to be set in stone so it could be it could be five inches or four inches doesn't really matter but just draw a little box centrally here so again three inches deep this way six inches wide that way okay and i'm using a heat erasable pen do be careful when you're using these on fabrics because they're not really designed for them they can bleach the fabric um, i've tested this one already and it doesn't so that's absolutely fine otherwise um, use a chalk or a a heat or air erasable pen would be fine so i'm just lining up these two pieces again so the bottoms are meeting so just make sure the edges there are perfectly matching and then i'm going to sew around this box Now your fabric is quite thick at this point, so take it slowly, don't rush it. Stop with the needle down when you come to the corner. Now let's turn around and carry on. It is quite simple to sew through, to be honest, if you're using the deck of the light. It feels a lot firmer than it actually is. I don't think your sewing machine will have a problem with it. Um, if you do, then change your needle to a denim needle, which is a stronger needle and that should help sew through these thicker layers. So clips are out. Threads are snipped. We don't like to see these. They do give a, a shoddy finish, I think, when you see loose threads like this. Well, I think so. Right, that's that. I'm just going to waft the iron over those pen lines to make them disappear and then we're going to fold this section back so again all the edges are lined up let me just get a good crease in that so match at the sides and match the edges here and I can put a crease in that I'm not taking the heat all the way through so don't worry about me not using an ironing mat at this point and then we'll flip it over and fold back again. So I've got nice creases on this point here too. That's the opening that I need to sew closed. And I'm just going to crease that. And then when that closes over, that's how my bag's going to be. So let me show you that just once again, because it can be a little bit confusing. So I sewed together, I, I did it this way, didn't I? So snap facing down, snap facing down, and sew a box around here. Doesn't matter which side you do it from, I chose to do it from this side purely because my fabric's paler and I can see the lines better. It doesn't really matter. Make sure the edges are lined up. And then we're going to fold back the pocket section and snip that off so that the edges match and put a nice crease across there and then fold the whole thing under like so so again you've got all of your edges matching or as as best they can you know it's not the end of the world if they don't match perfectly so line all of these up and then we're going to sew all the way around the edge here but not across the bottom we'll leave that open If 
if you can do a little back stitch over the top of the pocket you may have to turn the hand wheel by hand because that's going to strengthen the top of the pockets and then we'll carry on all the way around the flap at the top and then down the other side and there's my purse finished so when I fasten this over maybe one final press and that's how we're going to look and then on the inside you've got actually three rather large pockets a little one in the center because that's where we sewed in the um, that box shape but a large pocket on the front a large po pocket on the back and a really good sized purse or that could even be an evening bag so imagine this made up in Christmas fabric or seasonal fabric or glittery fabric I think that would look absolutely stunning so again it's a simple project to make but it's a little bit of fun because it's quite different the way that it's been put together but I hope you enjoyed it hope you enjoy making yours I hope you make lots of them give them away as gifts sell them and uh, I'll see you again very soon bye bye